Hello and welcome. I'm your host, Neil Howard, here on Health Professional Radio. Thank you for joining us once again. Going to have a conversation this morning with a returning guest, uh, returning to talk with us about some of the advancements in uh, HIV research. Uh, Dr. Kimberly Smith, you know, um, advancements, of course, have been made in HIV treatment during the last few decades or so, but there's still lots of progress to be made. Just last week, thousands of HIV researchers and clinicians attended this year's International AIDS Society Conference. the largest conference on HIV science in the world. And there were many key scientific uh, studies were presented there, including data focused on addressing the challenges that still remain for those managing HIV. Thank you for returning, uh, Dr. Kimberly Smith. How have you been? I'm good. Good morning, Neil. Good morning to you as well. Give our listeners who aren't familiar with you a bit of background. Sure. Um, so, I, as you as you said, I head up uh, global research and medical strategy here at Vive Healthcare, which means I oversee our clinical development of of new drugs for HIV. Our company is 100% focused on HIV. It's the only company that is focused on just on HIV treatment. And prior to joining Vive about five years ago, I spent uh, 20 years as an infectious disease physician in Chicago, taking care of many patients living with HIV. Now, how has HIV treatment actually changed over the last few decades? Well, you know, we first recognized in 1996 that you could control HIV by using combinations of medicines, combinations of at least three medicines. And that really transformed the disease. However, the medicines are often associated with a lot of side effects and and individuals often needed to take a handful of medicines. And so in the past few decades, we've made major progress in the types of medications that individuals need to take. They can take a lot less medicines and a lot with a lot fewer side effects. And so last week, what we were able to share at that international conference that you discussed was actually really important data, we think, that demonstrates that you can control HIV not with at least three drugs, but actually with only two drugs. And and that, we think, is a major step forward for patients. Now, the physical side effects um, being reduced by the reduction of at least one of the drugs, that's one thing. Uh, I'm sure that is, is going to change. But what about some of, the, some of the emotional challenges that still remain for folks uh, that are managing this, dr- this, uh, this condition? Well, unfortunately, HIV is still a disease that is associated with a lot of stigma. Uh, people are stigmatized in their personal lives from family or friends or loved ones often in the in the workplace they may be stigmatized even in in healthcare settings they are often stigmatized and and so we believe that actually just talking about uh, HIV more and actually talking about it as a chronic disease like other chronic diseases might help to reduce the stigma and encourage individuals to really seek treatment if they're living with HIV to be tested if they haven't been tested before to find out what their status is. And again, individuals that are living with HIV, it's important to know that the treatments have progressed and that they're much, much better than people may have heard about in the past. When it comes to these treatments being better, you you mentioned uh, being able to control HIV with uh, just two drugs rather than three. Were these drugs taken all at the same time? Can they take these drugs fewer intervals? Is that part of it? Sure. Well, so the two medications actually are combined into one pill. And so you just take one pill every day and it does not have a lot of interactions with other drugs. It, you know, obviously all drugs have some side effects, but the side effect profile for this particular combination has been uh, very mild. The most common side effect that we saw in the trials were things like headaches and, 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 you know, nasal congestion, that sort of thing. And so no significant side effects that would really impact people's uh, daily lives. And so that's a major improvement. And so they take one pill a day. And, you know, while there are other one pill a day regimens out there now, all of those regimens include at least three pills and in some cases four. And so this is the first once daily two drug regimen that can completely control HIV. How uh, how readily available uh, is it? Well, you know, uh, individuals can talk to their doctors about this this medication. It is available, um, you know, at at a pharmacy with a prescription from your doctor. And so obviously doctors are going to be able to evaluate the patient and make make a recommendation for what's the best treatment for them. But it is widely available. And I'm I'm sure with that wide availability, some of the um, the aid programs that go along with um, the financial aspect of getting some of these drugs still remains intact, even though it's once a day now more cost effective. 
that's a really good point. So, yes, it is a part of all of the national programs, including the AIDS drug assistance programs uh, for individuals who may be low income and have or don't have insurance. And and actually, this does happen to be the lowest uh, cost medicine for controlling HIV. And so that is actually a, an, an added benefit. Right. What are some other things that you heard or presented that you're excited about? Well, one of the other things that we presented was about a, a new therapy that we are in the process of developing, and it is actually a long-acting therapy. And so it is a combination of uh, two injections that will allow individuals to control HIV without taking a pill. So they get a get an, an injection or two injections once a month mm-hmm. instead of taking medicines every day. And so what we presented at this meeting was actually patient reactions to that and what the, what the patient uh, outcomes were. And, and patients were really very excited about the idea of not needing to take a medicine every day. And so that's a medicine that we hope to be able to launch at the beginning of next year. Great. Excellent. As far as uh, physical and emotional impacts on the uh, the HIV management community, there are still some strides to be made, but it seems that we're moving in, in a positive direction in an extremely uh, rapid fashion. No question that we're moving in a positive direction. I think the the fact that we're able to control HIV with, with less medicines is certainly a positive. And, and it's also a positive that when we control HIV, individuals are not at risk for transmitting to their partners. And so that's a major progress with the disease. And so, you know, we've talked about HIV stigma and the fact that individuals who are living with HIV can go on medicines and live a normal, healthy life. And again, not transmit to their partners, I think is really a very important thing and helps to, hopefully will help to reduce the amount of stigma associated with HIV. Absolutely. Where can our listeners get some more information? Well, they can get more information about Devato on uh, Devato.com. That's D-O-V-A-T-O.com. And, and more information about Vive Healthcare at VeveHealthcare.com. Dr. Smith, thank you so much for returning and joining us here uh, again on Health Professional Radio. As always, it's been a pleasure. Thank you, Neil. Have a good day. You as well. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Transcripts and audio of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to this podcast on iTunes, listen in and download at SoundCloud, and be sure and visit our YouTube channel at youtube.com.